Hey everybody, my name is Brian Collins. I'm the FinTech Managing Director here at Startup Bootcamp Australia. Uh, and we've been really privileged this week to have a huge FinTech influencer, thought leader, Nictarius Leolius. Welcome. Hello. Welcome back to Australia. Good day. Good day, mate. This is going to be great. Two non-Australians talking about the Australian fintech scene. I've kind of had my chops in four years. So, <laughs> so uh, we, you know, you've come here to come and chat and work with a bunch of our teams in the cohort, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Um, but I don't really. Well, we'll talk a bit about the teams probably a little bit later. My thought is, why don't we start by talking about just where the fintech space is now um, here in Australia, how it's changed over the past few years. You used to live. Uh, in Sydney, how has it kind of changed since when you last lived here, um, and just tying it into kind of a global space of how the, the fintech scene has evolved and changed. This is my concept. This is my thoughts. Right. So I figure we'll jump into it. Um, maybe we should start by me saying that I'm super excited that we actually have a program in Australia because mm. we've been trying to get this off the ground since 2015. Yeah. Um, mainly because the Australian financial services community is pretty tight, mm -hmm. it's a big range of services, mm -hmm. um, so it's actually a wonderful microcosm of what happens in other big hubs, Yeah. Um, but it's been really difficult to get the industry to engage in a meaningful way. Do you find the Australian scene different um, from other ecosystems globally? And I will preface that by saying... Uh, Personally, I have found it to be very different, okay. um, but I'd, I'd love your thoughts as well. You've been working in this industry, in this region, much longer. So th there's something about Australia, which is, it's an island, and sometimes there's a lot of island mentality. It's mm. like, oh, we, we're special, we're different. Yeah. Uh, but then when you benchmark the, the corporates in that space against what happens in the rest of the world, it's actually quite comparable. The problems that they have are the same. The kind of industry problems are the same. You have the same kind of journey from payments, through lending, through investment, through more esoteric aspects of the business and insurance, nothing, nothing's different there. Yeah. But when you talk to the individual organizations, they will tell you that, nah, nah, you don't really understand this. Yeah. Ironically, we had a couple of conversations last year where on the same day, the head of strategy of two different banks told us in confidence that their focus areas this year, these two points, uh, and then we meet the head of strategy of another bank, same day, three hours later, and to tell us in confidence that we have kind of our strategy this year, don't tell anybody, uh, these two points, it was exactly the same. Yeah. Of course, everybody focused on the same thing. Yeah. So if you take SME banking, which is a big thing here, yeah. it's a big thing everywhere. So mm -hmm. from that perspective, Australia isn't that special, mm -hmm. but there's a bit of a mindset of, just we know what we're doing, leave us alone, and because we're a little bit different. Well, and that's, that, that's very much been the concept. I mean, one thing I always have to remind people who uh, either haven't worked in or aren't from Australia is that you know, you're looking at 28 years of economic growth in this country, right? The longest, uh, longest economic uh, upswing in human history now. They just beat the Netherlands like from November of last year. So I think it's a 106 fiscal quarters of positive growth, right? Um, and so, yeah, when you do that, it's, I think it's natural for an industry to say, why do we need to change what literally is not broken? We, this, this has clearly worked. And that's where I think, uh, you know, for me, where I think it's interesting is when you look at other big fintech disruptions that have happened globally, you look at uh, what happened in the US, uh, you look at what happened in um, the UK, I don't think it's any coincidence that the major fintech revolutions that began started about 18 to 24 months after those regions were worst hit by the global financial crisis. And it was this very bottom up, ground up approach uh, where people wanted to go. But there was no global financial crisis here. There wasn't even a dot-com boom here uh, and bust. There was none of that, that that happened here. And so the the industry has been able to um, you know, stay fairly centralized, to stay fairly traditional in the sense of how it goes about doing things. And that's where I think, um, and why I get so fascinated and interested and excited by the opportunity of the Royal Commission uh, on the financial services industry that just occurred or the report that just came out beginning of this year. I think that becomes very interesting because now suddenly, whereas every other region has had this ground up approach, now the Australia industry is from a top down being told you have to change, you have to open, you have to create these open making opportunities. And that's where I think um, we're going to see some really big changes, but I'd love your thoughts on this as well. I think it's indicative that the very first fintech startup initiative was an accelerator of sorts that was focusing on wealth management. Yeah. Right? 
reflecting the fact that Australia is one of the largest asset management markets in the world, etc., etc. Right. So I totally agree with you. There was no pain in the same way that the mm -hmm. pain was felt in other markets. Um, we we generally think that uh, all this innovation talk means very little if there is no regulatory support. Yeah. Uh, and it's been interesting to see how uh, startups in markets where the regulators, regulators are more cooperative and more lucid and more forward-thinking mm -hmm. uh, have a much better chance of succeeding than in the markets that they really have to fight. Uh, like Germany was taking a long time for the regulators to come on board mm -hmm. and, and other places. And even the US yeah, has, been, say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. has been a very, very interesting uh, journey in the US. Uh, also with the startup bootcamp program in, in, in New York, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the fintech program was a real challenge to get to even talk to regulators. Yeah. Whereas you've got the FCA in London, you've got MS in Singapore, and SEC. So, from that perspective, I think it's fantastic that there is a push that comes from above, and in the end, it doesn't really matter where the need is being generated from, yeah. uh, as long as it actually results in the consumers getting a better deal, and the consumers can be the kind of private consumers, it could be corporate customers, it could be the wider industry, it could be wealth managers, it was anybody who is benefiting from an innovative solution that comes from the startups. Yeah. From your experience here in Australia, um, this idea has popped into my head, a question I should say, but do you think there's going to be a specific focus on any one area? I mean, you know, when, when, fintech, when fintech hubs start to, um, start to kick off, they tend to focus on one area and then obviously they expand as the industry gets bigger and bigger, right? Um, so we saw a huge amount of challenger banks coming out of the UK early, early days. Um, most of like the early days in the US saw more of um, uh, more of the types of banking businesses that people didn't necessarily care. The banks didn't care that much about. Uh, I know you love the example of TransferWise. I'll use it again here, right? Um, and that was very much the beginning of the US. Do you think there's going to be as fintech space gets bigger and bigger here? It, it is. I mean, not, you know. It, there's been some great work done over the past two years, really, in this space with what UpBank has done, Volt, um, AirWallex as well, just became the, the next the Australian unicorn, right? Um, but do we think there's going to be a specific focus? You know, I, I do come back to that wealth management side, and obviously that's, that's the big elephant in the room, but... I, I to some extent, disagree with what you said about, okay. about the hubs. Uh, oh. I think in, in the bigger hubs like London, uh, when you have a spectrum of financial services player profiles, mm -hmm. you get startups that are attracted by the variety of profiles and they build towards the different profiles. Mm -hmm. The fact that we've got the neobanks in the UK, by the way, more than in other markets, is partly encouraged by the regulators because yeah. the regulators remit in the UK is to increase competition uh, and it's a very clear remit and therefore that makes it very attractive to people go, you know what, if the regulators supporting us being a, a new competitor in that space, let's go for it. And, and that's been a different take on a top-down element. Um, mm -hmm. But in Australia specifically, how much retail disruption do you need for the consumer banking side? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's literally, the, the market's too small yeah. for it to become the next big thing that is part of the Australian fintech identity. Yeah. Right? But the big industry here is, again, driven by mandatory superannuation, yeah. uh, is, is the asset management world. Yeah. Call it wealth management, asset management, private yeah. banking to some extent. Um, so that's exciting. Yeah. And it's got a very healthy industry uh, on the insurance side. So yeah. again, there's stuff that's coming through here that might be different. So I think when it comes to the identity of the fintech world, uh, it's probably going to be more focused on that. Side. I agree with you on both of those. The one that you did mention that I also think is going to be a really big player, especially in the next year or so, is going to be RegTech as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, just specifically because of the work that ASIC and APRA have already started pushing into that space. Um, they try to make themselves very open uh, in seeing major changes and then you know, a major portion of uh, the Royal Commission that came out was focused on the regulatory side. But at the end of the day, my big bugbear is is always not what the startups are doing, it's yeah. the inability of the industry to respond to that. Mm. And from that perspective, the industry here is not different from any other part of the world. Yeah. There's an element of attitude and confidence and swagger that is not reflected, it's, it's not based on any real uh, initiatives and, and programs. There was an attitude of, we figured it all out, we just look what the others are doing and we, because we're better and different. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, the startups are struggling to get meaningful engagements with the corporates here in the same way the startups are struggling everywhere else in the world. Um, the banks are still very, very bad at catering for startup engagements by preparing themselves 
in all sorts of different ways to actually do something with the companies. So this has been the big conversation this week. You and I have had privately, you've shared this with some others, but we probably should talk about it here as well. Corporate startup collaboration. The I can big, jump into my soapbox. <laughs> the big buzzword. I mean, you know, for any corporates out there who are trying to work with startups for maybe for the first time or suddenly there's a dictate coming across, we need to be more innovative using our favorite I word um, out there. I mean, what, you know, what are the biggest things they need to be aware of? What are the things they need to uh, prep themselves for? Look, if we're talking about financial services innovation, yeah. we have to acknowledge that the industry is struggling to keep up with the technology changes and with the new business models that are being built on top of the new technologies. Yeah. So part of the global fintech movement is to get the industry to realize that they need to ready themselves because this is not going to change, it's not going to go away. Yeah. Right? So the whole point of this is how do you as an organization figure out how to change the organization so anything that's new that comes up and it's going to get faster and faster and faster that you can respond to this in a way that is no longer driven by steering committees and two-year projects because that's just not going to work. Yeah. Right? And that challenge is faced by everybody, being a retail bank, being a commercial bank, being an investment bank, everybody has the same problem. Now, how does this translate into meaningful engagement in startups? It starts with a, an identity question. Who am I as an organization and where do I want to go? And that strategic thinking through the lens of innovation, through the lens of innovation broken down by business unit. And that thought process rarely happens. People are getting excited by the hype and they feel like they need to tick a box. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of stuff and a lot of money being thrown at stuff that is not really meaningful. And that becomes a bit of a cycle because people then have spent the money because they built this super colorful lab with amazing 100 inch screens, but at the end of the day, it leads to nothing. And then you get the frustration, people telling you, well, we tried innovation, it didn't really work for us. I've heard people say that. Yeah. Um, and you go, that's not innovation, that's just marketing and show business and theater. Uh, so let's start the conversation again. If you really want to achieve something and you figure out that there's a startup in the market that does something that solves a problem for you, you don't need to build it yourself and you need to be smart about how to engage with the company. I actually think that's a fantastic final note to end on, Victorious. It's been a pleasure having you here this week. I really appreciate it. Thanks everybody for listening. Hopefully we'll be doing more of these throughout the FinTech program. Again, my name is Brian Collins, signing off. Thank you. Thank you.